Yo, right everyone, this is Cobb and welcome to another installment of Dueling with Cobb, the series in which you guys can get involved in the video. Just send me an inbox with your battle tag and a link to your armory for a chance to duel me in the series. As usual, I'm going to be covering the duels, giving as much of an overview as I can. I'll be pointing out my fails as well as things that I did good. So without further delay, let's get right into the clips. The first set of duels are against another YouTuber, a Windwalker monk called Zwen. Um, had a ton of fun dueling him and will probably be doing more projects with him in the future. And you can find a link to his channel below in the description. Now I've dueled a Windwalker monk before in this series so I did have a pretty solid battle plan in place before we even started. But no plan or strategy is completely solid and can be still messed up so let's check out that first in this duel. As always, I'm going to look to start out with a Petsa Juice against a Melee. Um, I'm going to use that to get off my Immolate. And now something I like to do against Windwalker Monks specifically, um, as well as Warriors, is churn out my control cooldowns really, really early on. And that's Blood Horror, Shadow Fury and Howl of Terror, as long as it isn't too DR'd. And this should let me free cast enough to force some defensives and get me ahead in the duel right away. So we start off with a Blood Horror which is all good, however I go and break this Blood Horror like a vegetable before I even get the chance to really cast any significant damage. I then Shadow Fury to try for some more damage, with Zwen Blanket silences me on this like a boss, and then after that he actually paralyzes my knockback and this is pretty much the nail in the coffin of my opener. The plan was to start out with a lot of control and damage with my first Daxel to get him to use early defensives. However, in this case, I've been countered by a Spear Hand Strike, a Paralyze, and my own poor execution. I redeem myself a little bit by getting off a Seduce a Chaos Bolt, but quickly find myself sitting in a Ring of Peace, followed up by a Fist of Fury, and this is going to force my heals. Now, not all is lost at this point. I do have my control cooldowns coming back up already, and I still have a Dark Soul to use. And we're still in this fight until I do this. This was more of a howl of mild dismay than a howl of terror. If I had just waited a few more seconds, this howl would have been full, probably forcing a trinket or a nimble brew, or I could have just used Blood Horror or Shadow Fury first. Um, but as a result of my lack of control now, this Dark Soul is destined to not deal enough damage to really scare Zwen. He's also able to connect onto me quite easily. I do portal away, but at this point my Dark Soul is already fading, and I have no survival cooldowns left, and no real bears left either. I do get off a Pixie Juice here and try to go for some damage, but he trinkets and karmas, and I manage to fear and get up an Immolate. I'm really, really desperate for Embers at this point, and more to heal than anything to be honest. I bought Horror to peel him off for a little bit on his Ring of Peace. But I just don't have the embers or damage to pull myself back into this duel now. And despite my best efforts to kite away, Zwen is going to be able to pick away at the last of my health pool and take a win here. This second duel starts out in a really, really similar way, only Zwen decides to trinket really, really early. So just like before, I water horror him and go for a really, really early chunk of burst damage. I land it and Zwen uses Diffuse Magic. I get blank at silence here, so I portal away as soon as possible. Then I see him battle charging me with Ring of Peace popped. I manage to Shadow Fury him and just stay out of its radius allowing me to land even more early damage. Then I follow up with the Howl which he doesn't want to risk sitting in so he nimble brews. Now contrast where I am now um, with the first duel in which my opener was countered and um, using a Dark Soul and my short cooldown control abilities early, I've managed to force nimble brew, a trinket and diffuse magic already from his word. And he's going to get to connect to me here, but I still have all of my survivals ready to go. So it's just a matter of existing until I can land my control abilities again while bursting with my second Dark Soul. I try my best to kite, even if it is extremely hard against a monk. So I end up just having to use my heals here anyway. And now Blood Horror is ready, Shadow Fury and Howl almost ready. I go ahead and pop Dark Soul. This is going to get Zwen's Touch of Karma, so I instantly land a Petsa Juice. I feel a bit cheeseball doing this, just holding him still until the karma wears off, but it was, I feel, a necessary evil. He does go MLG on me here and dodge this Shadow Fury and almost manages to Zen med my damage here. Doesn't quite call for him though, um, I still have Unending Resolve ready along with Howl of Terror. He's gonna connect with some damage here but my shield wall comes out and off of this Howl I'm gonna be able to finish the duel. This next series of duels are against Zria the Mage. Um, as I always do when facing mages, I buff up with Twilight Ward. Then as the duel is about to start, I right click the buff to remove it, just so they might waste their first global trying to spell steal nothing. 
I decide to open up with a blanket silence into a fear. Um, it seems to be kinda good against fire mages as they don't do a whole lot of casting I feel, um, so you're likely not going to need the spell lock to actually lock them out on school. He sees I popped an early Dark Soul, so impact stuns me on that. I managed to range a Frost Draw, which is kind of big. It is always best to play max range against a Fire Mage. You avoid Novas, Frost Draws, and Dragon's Breaths. Um, you can see he's pushed on me here, and that can only mean one thing again, so I instantly silence him into a Howl, avoiding his best. Then I use the end of my Dark Soul to get his Ice Block. So I can quite confidently say that this duel is going very, very well for me right about now. Again, I try to avoid him getting close range on me with a portal, but he just well catches me with a DB into a force draw. Deep Freeze comes after that, and as soon as I see he has Alter Time popped, I know that shit's gonna go down, so I immediately trinket and I pop my heals. I do think that Zria made a mistake during his burst there in blanket silencing me. Um, I think he didn't want to be CC'd on his burst, but the silence was actually pretty DR, and now that he has no counter spell, that's going to allow me to go ham with my second Dark Soul, and this is going to be especially good for me, as he still has his Hypothermia debuff. I finally throw out a Mortal Coil, I'm not sure why I held onto it so long, to be honest. Um, of course, we're speaking to Coil against Mages and not Shadow Fury, as they can just blink out of every Shadow Fury stun. Um, anyhow, I have enough gas left in the tank at this point to take a win from here on out, while the Hypothermia buff is still active. The final set of duels for this episode are against Morpheus the Demo Lock, another YouTuber whose channel you can find below, along with all of the duels from his point of view. In these duels I had a different kind of build going on to what I usually go for, and I pretty much tailored it to counter Demonology Warlocks. And Demo Locks to me feel like they take a while to wear down, so I was prepared for fairly long duels, so I spec'd Mortal Coil for the extra healing power. I also glyphed for Glyph of Ember Tap for even more self healing. Of course this glyph makes Ember Tap a hot, so I was ready to play really really carefully and maintain the hot whenever I dropped even a little bit of health. I start out here by spell locking Morph Sphere, there's pretty much nothing else that you want to be locking out other than a fear. And I throw out a banish onto his pet and then chain fears here, and I'm looking to fear his trinket, which I almost do if it wasn't for a pet stun here. He gets a fear on me which I break with Will of the Forsaken to get a howl on him, I want to have him controlled as much as possible, and after that I'm looking to build embers. I immolate Rain of Fire, then use a Dark Soul, and this isn't really an offensive Dark Soul, I'm just looking to build embers here. Morpheus has already popped a Dark Soul, so I sack Pact, and to recover the health loss from that, I ember tap already, which is what I mean when I say I'm playing very very safe. Just like against a priest, all warlocks now have howl, so I avoided that fear by coiling when he pushes in here. And the mini blob of healing is also juicy too. I get stunned and feared now, which I'm not too worried about as he's already used a Dark Soul and will likely be low on Demonic Fury. And here I see his imps have stacked up again, so I lob a Rain of Fire onto those to build some easy embers. Then seeing Morph push in here, Again, I am looking to kite away and avoid his Howl of Terror. I do so here, I manage to dodge the cast which is perfect for me. I locked out his fear here so I can go for some huge damage with his Dark Soul, then I land my own Howl off of that into another Chaos Bolt. In hindsight here, I could have used an Ember to Shadow Burn, I played a bit cheese ball-y though, and Ember tapped instead, just being super safe. Morph does go ham here, but I have all of my defensives still ready to use, I play safe and I just use those. Um, Around here I actually Havoc one of Morph's pets, just to gain double the embers from my next few spells and from here I'm going to be able to land the damage I need with the help of a bit more CC to finish off this duel. Demonology really really struggles damage wise this patch so far, so if you play Destro with a very very defensive healing minded playstyle, you'll almost always be able to outlast a Demo lock 1v1 I feel. Of course if we toss more gear and potential line of sight into this encounter, it will change things up a little bit, but I still honestly see Destro coming out on top most of the time. Another trick you can do against Warlocks in duels with the help of the add-on Vile cooldowns is dodge their Shadow Fury stun. And in this example, I almost get it right if you watch your opponent's Shadow Fury cooldown on Vile cooldowns, and you're fairly confident you can predict your opponent's next move, wait until the cooldown ticks all the way down to zero. Then, if you're ahead in the duel, it's quite common for your opponent to use their cooldowns as soon as they become available again. So Morph has a Shadow Fury ready again here, I just wait for a split second, then I hit my portal. And if anything, I managed to avoid a follow-up Howl of Terror just now, but I still got caught in the stun. But if we fast forward just a wee bit in this same duel, I get it just right. 
His Shadow Fury is ready again, I'm expecting it to come right out of this sphere. It breaks, I wait just for a moment, then I portal dodge the Shadow Fury. Um, of course this is somewhat luck based, um, but if you're able to kite well enough to avoid this Howl of Terror and you have portal cooldowns to spare, it is worth going for, you've really got nothing to lose when trying it out. Unfortunately I don't want this episode to run on forever, so this is all I'm going to be showing of jewels for this episode, but Zwen and Morph's channels can be found in the description below, where you can see all of our jewels from their points of view, so definitely make sure to do that. For now though, that's going to be all from me, I really really appreciate all of you tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, don't forget to leave a like on the video, it really really helps the views. Anyways, thank you all for watching again, and I'm going to catch you all later.